Live from New York. It's the only show that talks about Jalen Brunson and Rick Brunson. That's it's true. first things first today. The Lakers. Yeah. Uh, also making him upset. Quarters one through three shooting 52%. Fourth quarter, he's down to 17%. Three for 18. He was over five yesterday, Brew. What do you make of Embiid's performance and his anger with the fans who actually weren't there? Well, I want to be fair. All right. And, and you saw... Even in that interview, you can see the Bell's palsy yeah. on his side. He's so one leg and half yeah, the he's playing with a bad yeah. knee. And he's <laughs> he is Bell's. So I want to be. I do want to be fair about this. And he also is the only reason this is even a series. That's right. All right okay. He is. Okay. So I'll be fair. But you are out there playing nearly forty minutes, and I. <sighs> I do have a problem with the way he's playing, especially in the fourth quarters, but it's kind of throughout. All right, and you go, now I know I say this all the time. He is a seven foot two inch, 300 pound guy who is playing like he's 6'4, 200 pounds. All right, in the fourth quarter, you gave his stats. They guarded, remember, Mitchell Robinson was out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isaiah Hardenstein played. Two seconds in the fourth quarter because of foul trouble. Because Embiid got they, in foul trouble. Right, yep. right. But they were guarding Joel Embiid with 6'7", OG Anunobi, and 6'8", Precious Acuna. Achua. Achua. Yeah. I mean, that, that's who they were guarding him with. All right? And the reason they can guard him like that is because he does play True. smaller. I'm trying to give him constructive criticism. I really am. Tough love because I would love for Joel Embiid to win a championship. The dude is phenomenal. He is one of the best big men I've ever seen, mm -hmm. but he's not going to get that love until he can get at least within shouting distance of a championship. And it is – and you, showed, you talked about the numbers – he had – look, these are a little expansion on that. In the fourth quarters in this series, he has 27 points, 15 of them in game three. All right, so in the other three games, he's giving you four points a game in the fourth quarter, two rebounds. You, I wonder why. Maybe it's because he's always at the foul line or the three-point line. I looked at every one of his ten rebounds in game four. Two of them maybe came in traffic. Other ones just fell into his hands because he's the biggest guy there, and there weren't a lot of people around him, especially Knicks. So he does not play to his size. Mm -hmm. I get it. He is a phenomenal jump shooter, but Nikola Jokic is proof, Nick. You can do both. Because Jokic plays at the free throw line a lot, too. But when it's time, he will go inside. And you can have both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, this is so, the misnomer I, that no, today's of course athlete, you can have both. That if you're a jump shooter, you can't work on your post game. No. If you work on your post game, you can't work on your J. That's ridiculous. No, that's, you can do both, so Joel. That, and that's, one re that's listen, something that hurts the, the Sixers. The guy who, and not just because they're both, you know, from international players from the continent of Africa, but the guy who, whose game he mirrors the most is Dream. But Dream would do work on the block. Yeah, and Dream I, wasn't it, out that. It was a different game. It was a different game, game but, yeah, but Dream, he, he is one. the best yeah. true center jump shooter right. I've seen since Dream, and maybe the best ever, really, because of is what he the does. Best, uh, and yeah. so you started with. With what I, I consider to be a difference between excuses and explanations. Excuses are things that you, you use to get yourself out of trouble or you shirk responsibility. Too many Knicks fans in the uh, arena. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> so we can, that, you want to call that an excuse? Fine. Explanation is, I think, one thing you mentioned, which is he's playing on one leg, and I don't know how much Bell's palsy affects you, but it can't be pleasant. Right. It right. Can't, but the other one is this he's exhausted. And I don't think it's as simple as we'll be in better shape. He played all 24 second half minutes yesterday. Mm -hmm. And this is something that, I would, that I've seen happen to LeBron in his career. LeBron more so later than early. But when you're in a spot where if you go to the bench, your team gets crushed. Yeah. And therefore, you can't get the regular rest of everyone else. Then come the fourth quarter, you look like, oh, my God. Where's the fourth quarter production? And the answer is, well, you spent it up when I, sp when I haven't rusted since halftime. Because when you look at this series, the difference is when he goes to the bench, they lose. It's jarring. 
That is the equivalent. If he sat for a whole game to losing by almost 60, and it happened again yesterday. They're, they're up 10 after the first. He goes to the bench. They squander it. He comes back and basically has to play the rest of the game. Yeah, but getting but so they, exhausted in the fourth is not the answer the, either. And, no, and, I, right, and, but I, I, the, they're in a bad spot. They're, when I, you're exhausted, what's the first thing to go? Your legs. The jump shot because your legs go. He is so much bigger. I mean, yesterday so, in the fourth quarter, he had, what, four or five inches and 100 pounds but, or 70 pounds so, on every Knicks defender. Go inside and draw a foul. So that, that that's that's fair, and he was drawing fouls great early. early he, that's and then what he once Hardenstein went out, the, the, the Knicks started defending him better. But to me, the real difference in the game, we can put some of this on Embiid, some of it on the supporting cast, and a lot of it credit to the Knicks was the Sixers simply couldn't end a possession. Yeah. They couldn't get a defensive rebound. And there the, and I there is an element of I it is not when a team is crashing the glass on you the way the Knicks are. You can punish it by okay, we're going to then leak out and get transition buckets, but it, that only works if you're getting yeah, the rebounds. So instead what you have to do is the opposite, almost be like, you know what? We are going to concede any transition opportunity and we're going to box out. Because Josh Hart having 16 rebounds or whatever he did and being one of the most impactful players in the game when you're 0 for 7 from the field, that that is being there. I was there. I was one of the people in the crowd that felt like a 50-50 Knicks Sixers you know, game, like almost at a neutral side. It was insane. That fourth quarter when the Knicks were getting bad shots and the Sixers were playing good defense and then Josh Hart comes swooping in for a rebound. OG gets a rebound. And eventually, on the third or fourth shot of the possession, they make mm. a bucket. That, to me, was the biggest difference in the game. About the crowd, quickly. Yeah, go. Just like he's disappointed, they're disappointed too, though. They've been watching this year after year, and I get it. He's banged up, but he's banged up so every, selling every their tickets? season. No, I'm just saying they're like, we've seen this. Well, we've seen it before. I, I'm not making excuses, but I'm saying just like he's disappointed and ticked off, I'm sure they feel the same way about our big man in the fourth quarter who gives me four points a night. So, go wild. Then don't sell your tickets. I get, I get, I, I understand a handful of people selling their tickets. I understand the financial ramifications of it, but... Philly's main thing is home court advantage. The Eagles are a tough. Or you go down to the link. It's a tough, mean-spirited place. It's a tough place to play. And if everyone's got their tickets for resale and everybody can come down and buy them up, or, I think Embiid has a legitimate gripe. No, like, but he guys, has a legitimate doing? gripe. But so do that. The, and it's just so listen, do that. It's a weird spot you know, where you're. The, it's game. a drivable distance. Tickets at the Garden oh, yeah. right now are to get in. Over 500 bucks a person. Mm -hmm. So if you're a Knicks fan, you know what I mean. It makes sense to go to Philly and be able to afford to go to yeah. a game. But we, before we move on, we have to say something about Jalen Brunson, real quick. So Jalen Brunson, I couldn't believe this, just became the first player in NBA history to have at least 85 points and 20 assists in consecutive playoff games. No one's ever done it. I, I looked. I, I looked it up. I had Dusty total, check it. Yeah, it basically average at least 42 a night. Uh, and 10 assists a night. And scoring 40, going 47 and 10 in a game where your team scores 97 is, is different. Jordan, you know what yes. I mean? Well, the, a, I mean, seriously. No, legit, what, the, maybe Jordan. not so much the 10, but yes, the 47 well, for right. sure. Um, but no, that you're right. No, like the Jordan's Jordan used to do final yeah. game of his career, the 45 with, with Chicago, I mean, with Chicago with final game that I'm, yeah. the media lets you talk about. Um, he had 45 <laughs> and the Bulls, I don't think, scored 90. Like, I think it's one of the fi greatest games ever played. I'm not putting that performance up there with that, but I wanted to say that also because his dad yelled at me at the game and said we don't give him enough Rick credit Brunson. on the show, which is crazy. We give him a lot of credit. Because we talk about Rick, Rick Brunson on the we show all the time, <laughs> sometimes accidentally. Jalen was great. We, we, we was did. Great. We should give him a yeah. little love. He was sure. great. Yeah. He was phenomenal. All right. Meanwhile, in L.A. Okay. You cannot, do, what? You cannot be happy. What do you this. mean? You won one game. Well, I don't know. The series series not over. Oh my God. Hey, Wiles, I got I'm a question for you. Back oh and I, I got a question for you. Go ahead. What's your confidence level, buddy? My confidence level is at 97.5. That is not where it was <laughs> when I walked in this morning. Uh, uh, and this what morning is the 96.5. Uh, no, you're nervous about Jamal Murray. Okay, here's, you're, here's no, Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray the grabbed deal? his calf. Was he we, writhing? We have he wasn't writhing. No, I didn't pull the video because I didn't want it. I didn't want him to have to see it. You didn't want to feed uh -oh. him the Knicks. No, I, I don't know. Oh, Jamal. With or without Jamal, oh, I'm not. Okay. Go ahead. Jamal, Jamal, I think this has been bothering him the whole time because the only reason, it's certainly not the Lakers' 
stout defense. <laughs> uh, why he's just missing shots. Oh. So we are expecting him to be cooking. But his field goal percentage is at 38%. Me and Brew. Okay. And also ahead. the NBA world at large. Okay. And also all of Canada. Okay. Uh, last amongst uh, all players with 60 or more attempts. So, Some of these are just like shot selection sometimes a little bit off. He loves the mid-range game. Yeah. And granted, it oh. won the game. But sometimes like, oh, a little turnaround yeah. jump shot. Sometimes you're just missing yeah, at the rim that are yeah. open that's shots. That's coaching analysis. It's not putting on sunglasses and counting off crack commandments, which is what you've been doing thus far in this series. On. So, they won one I've game. Got, I've got they won one Hold game. On. Here's the thing. And this is where this is where your lack of a memory of your own takes works against you. What? Because Celtics Heat last year, the moment, because it was 3-0 Heat, yeah. and then Boston won the first game. And then you correctly said, actually, at the time, oh, well, now the pressure's changed. It's not 3-0 anymore. It's 3-1. What if Boston wins this game? What then happens? So I ask you, and then I'll explain why I have this series exactly right. Uh, I'll ask Brew well, and then you, and then you guys go. Yeah, but... If the Lakers win tonight, do you think we're getting a game seven? You three in a row. No, that they, is not they, the question. That, the question is, I mean, I, 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 it's hard for me to answer that because what everything to me is Jamal Murray. That's right. If Jamal Murray is out or severely hindered, but especially out, I think the Lakers actually have a very good chance of winning this series. <laughs> Denver is the not series. the same. No, Denver is not the same without. Now, I'm not saying I would pick them to overcome. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not picking them to do it. But if Jamal Murray is out, let me tell you how much uh, Jamal Murray matters. As yeah, great as Jokic is, he's healthy last year. Title. Yeah. All right? He's not healthy for the playoffs the year before. Lose in the first round in five yeah. games to the Warriors. He's out the year before that, 2021. They are swept in the second round by Phoenix. Now, these yeah. are teams that went yeah. on to go to the finals, but still. 2020, he's healthy. They get Conference to the Western finals. Conference Finals against yeah. the Lakers. Yeah. Like, Jamal Murray is critical yeah. Yeah. to this team. Now, I, I'm picking Denver to sw win this series, okay. and I think they will win tonight. Okay, thank you. All right? My goodness. But if they don't get through this if series, they, they will not win the West without Jamal Murray. Oh, of course. Well, and if they don't win tonight, they have real problems. Who, go ahead, Wilds, and then I'll explain. Oh, it's, a, it's, a hard, it's a hard question for me to answer, too, because it's kind of like, you know, if I had wings and I would fly, would my, would my wings get tired? I'm like, I don't know. It's so hard to even conceive of. I can't wrap so my it, head around it's, it's it. It's impossible to conceive of the Lakers they winning won, in Denver. They, they, the last time they played, did it, was it as close of a game as could possibly exist is in the Is that what we're counting now? Okay, good. No. The Super Bowl is close, too. No, that's, Let's run that I, back. And I guess put that, Brock Purdy and, in the that, Hall of Fame. And you know what? that went to overtime. Wilds, and, and correct. And if a week later that game were to be played again, and I would say it is impossible to conceive of a way for the Niners to win, I'd look ridiculous. Okay, well, you would well, say so that. The, because no, coming up later that. in the show, <laughs> and a question you made us put in, yeah. it is literally. So you're getting so mad, buddy. I'm not getting mad. I'm just correct. You know, you're talking about Niners. This is my Let's correct talk voice. Nuggets. This is my. Let's talk Lakers are we surprised? KC are not the phase yeah, to three. Yeah, it was super close. Yes. Who cares if that, it was close? Okay, so but you said you can't conceive. It's impossible. Denver is going to win tonight. Okay. Jamal Murray is probably going to play. I, I if think he doesn't okay. play, of course, there's a reason to be slightly concerned. Okay, here's. But the Lakers are outmatched. Beyond just okay, Jamal Murray, so there's here's a coaching the, mismatch. It's the best so player Hubs, mismatch. My, it's home court advantage. So it's historical dominance. I agree dominance. with that to a, to a true. degree. And Hubs, if we can just put the last graphic first and then go in the order we had, the the reason that I think you're slightly overstating the dominance, it, not of the history, but of this series, is oh my this. God. Well, no. If we are talking, I'm not talking about moral victories. This I'm sounds like it was a close 3-0. Well, <laughs> Three all one. I know is this. <laughs> not a close sweep. The idea that the Nuggets have controlled every aspect of this series is not true. The idea that the Lakers haven't shown you in four straight games, no matter where it is, the ability to build big leads on the Nuggets is not true. So the question I'm just asking is, can they win a game in Denver? That's all I'm talking no. about. No. So you're, uh, do you have the, evidence that they can win or that they the, can If Jamal Murray close. plays, they won't, the, the Lakers won't win. Okay, so, I, so going into this series, 
My. This is an insane graphic you have up right now. What? I cannot believe. It's a close. What, what do you mean? What what, what is graphic. insane about it? A percentage of time leading? Like you're using that as a positive? That because, because well, let me ask you because this. Because here's they the thing. The with with LeBron, the they should be able to close. If the numbers were reversed and it were 3-1, don't you think that would be more evidence as to why Denver is in full and total control. If the Lakers, let's just say the like Lakers. Like a Celtics had, margin of the, victory thing, sure. The, she, I mean, I know, I, listen, I know you actually like these arguments because you make them all the time. Mm -hmm. The Nuggets, for some reason, you become very protective of, which is fine. <laughs> but I, going into the series, the reason I thought the Lakers had a chance were there were five reasons. First one was, I do not think LeBron is going to be awful in the fourth quarter the way he was the first time. Let's see how it's been. LeBron in the fourth quarter this year, only Anthony Edwards has been better in the fourth quarter of these playoffs, or at least more points. Yeah, besides okay. him missing, they, they, besides so him but missing Nick, they a game-winning shot, no, he's no, I mean, played I, great. He's I, been great, he's but been they great. still are getting snapped. He had a game-winning shot, I, and he missed it. I, but other than that, sick. I agree with all that, Wilds, but it's about whether – it's about projecting tonight. Okay. I'm not giving an MVP out. I'm asking I'm the, asking this question – about whether or not you have reasonably believe can win tonight. The second reason that I had was, was D'Angelo Russell going to be the worst player in the playoffs? Now, he hasn't been. He's been good one game, okay another, and bad twice, as opposed to 0 for 4. <laughs> the next one was yeah. uh, Jamal Murray. You can say nobody thought Jamal Murray was going to cool off, but I remember saying that. he wasn't going to have the best series yes, of his did. career. The next reason was, were the Nuggets going to shoot better from three than any team playing against LeBron team in a decade? I said, I don't think so. And how has that worked out? And the last one was, are they going to miss Bruce Brown, their only bench contributor? Well, that's the entirety of their bench. That playing 47 minutes a game, which means basically one of their five spots, and they're giving them 11 points and shooting 30% from the field. So, I say all that to say this. The idea... That a series the Lakers have led for 75% of the time. That the swing game came down to literally a buzzer beater. That you are saying it's impossible. And, Brew, I think you agree with me. He's saying it's impossible the Lakers win tonight. I'm saying that's ridiculous. And the 40, when and, we play, I just don't, I just reject the argument because it's an argument that you wouldn't allow me to make to you. About if, what? About the Super Bowl. where I, it's like, Football and basketball are different sports. I know that. Under different contexts. I mean, I, look, you, 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 I, I think there's that, one, like I said, to me, it's Jamal. That's the only. If Jamal Murray, if there was no report that he's questionable, if we, we thought he was fine, I would not think the Lakers have much of a chance to win tonight. Don't have a chance. Not at the all. The line is seven and but a half. They without what was the line for game years. two? Was it seven and a half? Was it in Denver? Did it come down to the last shot? Okay, good. To say That's they great. Don't I hope a lot of people The Nuggets want have dominated that. this series. You can put up all if the If you think it's close, they, sure. If they're 11 and they one. They came back I don't know what else down. to say. I, you, you're, I'm, we're I'm we're down to the minutia of Bruce Brown not no. being there. No. And I'm saying they're 11 and one. And you're trying to be like, well, what if Christian Brown. Uh, no, I'm not. Is, I, I'm actually. What I'm Jamal trying to do is. was not questionable would you be I, this confident what i am trying to do is have an, a, a conversation about the western conference finals that is only about the western conference finals that doesn't involve games that happened last First year one. in the regular First season that's what you're talking about i'm sorry about. i shouldn't First say one. western conference finals in the way in, i'm this series right what i'm saying is i'm trying to have a conversation i'm thinking about it like it's the conference finals i'm trying to have a conversation about this series. Okay. The 3-1 the matters to me. The 11-1 to one doesn't. Okay. The, the, what is the percentage the, of teams that have come back 3-1? 3-1? 3-0 at this point. But it was 3-1 at this point. It was 3-0. Yeah, Who's ever I think come back I think there's been 11 3-1 come comebacks in NBA history. Okay. And zero, think this three but zero, it's 0 3 -oh. I so am it's, not, I'm not talking. So it's never happened in the history of the NBA? That is correct. Okay. But so the, what are we talking about? Because <laughs> the, the conversation it's never happened in the history of the I NBA. thought we were trying to have was about tonight's game. Okay. I'm and saying plenty of teams down 3-0 have won a game five. Plenty. So if you you're well, saying it's four, at zero percent, I'm saying have, it's historically it's at zero percent to, to win seven. tonight. It's not, buddy. Is the series at zero percent if it's never happened before? If I'm saying that you, I've, no one's ever seen a unicorn. You're like, I don't know. I've seen a lot of horses and I've seen a lot of goats. And I, I could see those things happening. Okay, that's like, so But that's, if you've never seen, it's that, never happened in the history of the league. That yeah, a three-zero so, comeback. But I I 
if you can run the tape back, and I know you're very upset I'm saying, about it's just this. Ridi- it's I, being unfair to me. That's what I, I don't like about it. The, because you wouldn't let, if I made this argument to you, that's something that has never happened in the history of mankind, had a chance of happening, you would fillet well, that, me. Yeah, but that's why I've been very careful not to say the Lakers are winning the series. <laughs> I, you know, All I, I, said I don't like you. That I don't like you anymore. The show's ruined. Win tonight. <laughs> I said if they win tonight, we're getting a game seven. I and don't you like are you. trying to you're talk about worst. the overtime You're the worst the guy. Bowl. You're the worst guy. <laughs> <laughs> you made me do this whole thing and you don't believe if they that win tonight. If they win tonight, win tonight I feel like started. the pressure's on Wilds like Wilds and the Nuggets. might not show up tomorrow. Cancel the show. Just canceled. <laughs> Speak is up next. I'm sorry if you enjoyed this show. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.